Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and folks, we are broadcasting from inside Renaissance Bank in beautiful Alpharetta. And if you're looking for a bank that's big enough to handle pretty much any need you can throw at them as a business, but small enough to deliver their service in a personal way, I recommend Renaissance Bank. And I know of what I speak because I've used their uh, services before and they do great work. So go to renaissancebank.com and find their local office and give them a call. I think you'll be glad you did. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And folks, if you hear fireworks in the background, we're celebrating a special episode today. This is episode number 500 of North Fulton Business Radio, and we're excited about that. And I've got three fantastic uh, uh, guests, I would say guests, but they're actually great colleagues of mine and associates of mine who uh, I value their relationship immensely. And the first guy I want to introduce is Stone Payton, and Stone is with the Business Radio X Network and also... Cherokee Business Radio, Stone. Well, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for having me. What a fantastic way to celebrate your, am I allowed to say, 500th episode of North Fulton Business Radio. Fantastic. I know it. You knew I was old, but you didn't know I was that old, (laughs) right? So, (laughs) yeah, this is pretty exciting. I was telling somebody this morning that if I hadn't counted them, I wouldn't think myself I had gotten to 500, but I surprised myself here on this one. So uh, it's pretty uh, cool. Pretty cool. So what kind of folks have you interviewed? What kind of businesses have you had come through here over those 500 episodes? A little bit of everything, I suspect. A little bit of everything. So I've had a um, whole lot of attorneys, a whole lot of CPAs, a whole lot of uh, you know the, the usual suspects, but I've had some unusual guests over time. I think the most the most interesting guest I had – was a professional mermaid. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't come all mermaided out, though. <laughs> but but she was a prof- great business, and she apparently does events, and her thing is water safety. So she, she uses her skills as holding her breath underwater to – to demonstrate water safety and she does that as a mermaid so it was pretty yeah so you know as you know right because you um have been involved in business radio x much longer than i have we celebrate everybody and um doesn't matter how big they are or small they are we celebrate them right and so many such interesting stories and what i love about our format and the way you've chosen to conduct the shows that you do here you really get to know the person behind the business, the why behind the business, where they're trying to take it, what they feel like they've learned, and you get to know the person. Yep. It's, that's part of what makes it so so special, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, people uh, love the opportunity to talk about their own business because they don't get that opportunity, and that's what we provide. So, I mean, it's it's pretty gratifying, but you know that better than I do, right? Well, I've been doing it. I was, I was, I was speaking with one of our guests earlier, uh, Bill McDermott, who we'll get a chance to visit with some more here in a, in a few moments. When I started this, when I met Lee Cantor, uh, I had black hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's been some. It's it's, it's been, been a minute. Years. Yeah, <laughs> it has. But Lee Lee advised me uh, early on. He said, "Cast a wide net. We want to live into that mission of supporting and celebrating local business and community leaders." There will be people who come through the studio that do fit the profile uh, to, or at least qualified to be potential um, clients for the Business Radio X system. And we can, and for those folks, we will be able to help them um, help others and, and grow their business and give them a, a very substantial re- return on their investment, whatever that might look like for them. So I, uh, I, I, I don't know that I necessarily immediately believed that, you know, cause I came from the world of sales and marketing. I was all about targeting your ideal profile client. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns out uh, like on so many things, Oli was right. Uh, and it, uh, doing that I think has, has, uh, given us what I feel like. I know I'm a little biased. I, I 
pretty well deserved reputation in all of the communities that we serve that we're we're the real deal. We're serious about living into that mission. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, if you want to grow your business, particularly if you're in the professional services B two B space, and you want to own your backyard, uh, you ought to at least sit down and talk to us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know that's the thing. We 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 tell our show hosts that if you make it about others, yeah, uh, then and you make it about the tribe you want to serve, the tribe will serve you back, right? Yeah. Well, what you're describing is. We're real, we really do the same thing. We eat our, but we eat our own cooking, and that's how we build studios at at the local level. Is we start by serving first, and we just serve the market. And the, and guess what? The market serves us back, right? I am so excited about and challenged by that part of our mission mm-hmm. uh, because we're in thirty seven markets now. Uh, we continue to grow. I, I feel great about that. I feel great about the work that we're doing in all of those communities, and. Boy, is it moving too slow for me. We, 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 no, we can't get to all the people we should be getting to. We can't get to all the stories we should be sharing. Right. There are so many communities. I mean, they're not all going to have a John Ray in them, okay? But there's going to be somebody there that can do a really good job with the benefit of these tools, these resources, the magic of this platform, with that um, that heart of service, that mindset, right? All right. Genuinely wanting to invest in their local community. There are so many other communities that we can and should be serving so uh, that's what gets me up every morning is trying to figure out, you know, where can we place the next one? How can we help them get up and running? So, yeah, anybody out there that has a cousin in, you know, Dallas or Houston or San Diego or Pittsburgh or some of these markets where we're not, uh, mm-hmm. how about reaching out? <laughs> yeah. We'd love to talk to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and uh, you've got a great support system with um, you and Lee and Abby and uh, the, the other great folks that are in our network. Well, you had a good support system until yeah. about a year and a half, two years ago. Then Lee's wife, Abby Cantor, retired from Coca-Cola, a little company some of you may have heard of. <laughs> Small little out-of-the-way beverage company, yeah. <laughs> now we got some brains over there at HQ. <laughs> so you know, we are really well-equipped to help you run your own studio and certainly to help you, uh, you know, to ex- execute on your own show. If, if you're that kind of client. But uh, yeah, I think we get better and better. But yes, you know what I think the secret sauce is? I think it is John Ray, Karen Nowicki, Mike Salmon, uh, you know, Bo Henderson. We've got uh, um, Roger McManus up, up in Rome. We've got all these folks around the country mm-hmm. that, that they're all kind of following that same. They have, there's a great deal of overlap in the value system, right? Mm-hmm. Or they wouldn't be part of the team anyway. And so you, you have that consistent mindset, value system approach. But then they all also, uh, we've given them the latitude, thank goodness, to sort of do things their own way. And then they return the learning to the organization. Mm-hmm. And we all benefit when Karen uh, discovers something or when you find something that's really serving a, a client. So, I, I, yeah, I, I feel I feel so blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, and, and uh, the – and that's a pretty cool part of what we do because we're not a, a franchise organization where, you know, there's some uh, wisdom from on high that comes down, right? Well, I mean, uh, we're we're pretty – everybody's pretty collaborative on sharing what they know. Oh, very much so. And we've gone to great lengths to date uh, to avoid the F word, uh, franchising. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And there's some some reasons for that. Some of it's just you know there's there, there's expense and regulation and discipline and rigor that mm-hmm. you know just doesn't suit me and Lee. <laughs> but yeah. also we wanted people to have that latitude, uh, but we get a lot of the same benefits mm-hmm. because there's so many repeatable uh, processes, transferable tools, best practices, and our crowd uh, by definition the folks that that are attracted to us are the kind of folks who are they're not just willing man they, they they're compelled to to share what we're learning so i i love this about our crowd and i'll tell you where else we learn so much is from our clients Mm -hmm. i mean any good anything that you've seen hq share with the rest of the group yeah we learned it from either someone else in the group or and or a client (laughs) it wasn't me and me or lee i'll tell you that well, speaking of clients, I th- we've got a couple in the studio. Well, let's tee them up. Uh, we, we've got Anthony Chen here with us. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, doing well. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be part of the 500th episode. Yeah, we're delighted to have you. And we have Bill McDermott, who I mentioned a moment ago. Good to see you again, man. Well, it's great to see you as well. And uh, excited about 500 episodes of North Fulton Business Radio X. So I'll ask you first, uh, Bill, and, I, and I'll come back to you, Anthony, because I'd love to hear from you both on this 
uh, what was the genesis, the catalyst to, that? Uh, how did you kind of come into uh, to our circle here at Business Radio X? Well, there's a saying that goes, uh, "Luck is where opportunity and preparation intersect." And so, um, my grandfather was an editor for the Chicago Daily News. He was a great storyteller, uh, and I think I inherited that storyteller gene. Uh, at the same time, I had the opportunity to be a guest on John's show, and we talked, and And uh, I think he even invited me back after the first time, so that was encouraging. <laughs> There's a win. Yeah, there you go. And so he said, you know, Bill, you really ought to consider your own show. And I thought about it, and I said, well, let's talk more. And so uh, three years ago, uh, Profit Sense, ProfitSenseRadio.com, uh, was born out of the opportunity that John Ray presented me uh, in my preparation and inheriting that storyteller gene from my grandfather. So what kind of folks are you interviewing? Is there a, a guest profile, a, a certain kind of story that you try to try to share? Yeah, so uh, Profit Sense is born out of, I believe, every business owner is a hero. Uh, and that hero has a story. And along the way, that hero meets several guides that advise them in their business journey. And so uh, Profit Sense is really about telling business owners stories uh, and telling the stories of the professionals that advise them in order for them to successfully run the business. The idea is really um, to inspire those who are slugging it out in corporate America, there's really a better way. And I'm, I'm proof of that. <laughs> right. And secondly, uh, these business owners uh, need a source of inspiration. Can we share information with them to inspire them to go above and beyond what they're already doing? So it's very much a, a pay it forward uh, idea, yeah. which I think is very consistent with the mission that uh, Business Radio X has. And as a professional services advisor myself, um, the way it started and the way that it has turned out has really been interesting and incredibly beneficial. So I, I got to ask you, because I, I feel like I am absolutely unqualified to do this properly. And it's a, it's a skill set or a, uh, a, a discipline that I, that I need to cultivate because I certainly appreciate and, and admire and, um, and, and thirst for good quality counsel on a number of fronts, because there's just so much I don't know. That's why all the questions come to me so easily. Uh, how do you go about um, interviewing, engaging, speaking with someone that you think you might want to bring on to, to give you counsel? And how, how do you know what advice to follow and what advice to leave alone? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, hey, it took me a minute to get it out, but I thought it was a fantastic question. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> so my first two guests were actually existing clients of mine, uh, people that I had worked with. Uh, they each had their own entrepreneurial story. Uh, one was uh, a successful IT CEO who sold their business. Uh, the second one is a very successful uh, uh, entrepreneur in the manufacturing space who had built his business over time. And the idea really was to tell those stories of those business owners of how they were successful and in promoting them and promoting their businesses, it was a, it was a great opportunity to pay it forward. The inspiration then came to have uh, a business owner and a business owner that maybe I'd like to get to know better and an advisor like a banker or a CPA or an attorney all in the room and the dynamics of building those relationships have really morphed into them doing business with each other. And the mm. byproduct, which was a pleasant surprise, is some of those business owners have actually engaged me in a meaningful dialogue and have become clients of mine. What a fantastic format for for a show. And um, if and when you seek counsel, you're talking to a group of people that you it goes beyond no like and trust. I mean, we've we've heard that, but I mean, you've you've really gotten to know these people. So it's really interesting. During COVID, uh, I worked with a uh, I work with a very successful architectural firm. Uh, when COVID hit, architectural business in some sectors really stopped, 
And unfortunately, mm-hmm. this owner had brought on a, a very successful professional, but all of a sudden was faced with having to lay that person off and wanted to do it right. Yeah. And, you know, dealing with uh, terminations, dealing with benefits issues can be very complex. By the way, this architect was on the show and an ERISA benefits attorney was also on the show. So this architect calls me and says, hey, Bill, do you know anybody, you know, attorney? I said, do you remember Nancy? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And so Nancy and Bill got together and uh, Nancy was able to help Bill navigate those waters. and, And another professional relationship was built because they had originally met on the show. It's, you know, it's all about relationships, Stone. And I know you know that. Well, I, I, I continue to learn and relearn that every day and have that reaffirmed. And I, and I do find that at least in, in my business and personal life, it is about it is about relationships. Anthony, I'm sorry you have to follow that act because that was incredibly articulate and eloquent. But it's going to be really hard. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. Well, you saved the best for last. I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> but I'd love to hear a little bit about your backstory. Uh, what, what compelled you to, to get involved with Business Radio X and, and some of what you've been experiencing in, in hosting your show, man. Uh, similar story with Bill's in terms of luck and, and chance. Uh, having moved down to Georgia here from New York, I had I restarted it all over, uh, knowing absolutely nobody. And I figured, all right, there's got to be a way to really market myself, not just being an advisor, but a business, small business advocate. And then by chance running into you and then being a guest on John's show and all at the same time, the firm's broker-dealer were kind of opening the doors. Well, to put things, go back a little back in time, several years ago, uh, we weren't even allowed to have LinkedIn profiles. Mm. Talking about like really oh, being wow. in a dinosaur age yeah. when it comes mm. to social media. Mm. But then when they started opening up a little bit more and realizing, hey, our advisors kind of need to market themselves. They need to be in the 21st century. And they kind of let loose, well, not fully loose, but allowed advisors to, hey, if you want to have kind of a YouTube channel or a podcast as a way to differentiate yourself in the market, we're going to run a couple of tests with a certain advisors. And I thought all of this happening at the same time, um, mm. someone's dropping some hints for me. I should probably <laughs> jump on that. Yeah. yeah. So the universe was conspiring to help you out a little. Uh, in a way. Yes. <laughs> so you're clearly enjoying it. Mm-hmm. What, what are you finding the, the most rewarding? What are you enjoying the most about hosting your own business radio X show? You think? Uh, seconding with what Bill mentioned is being that advocate for the business, kind of the concept uh, running the idea with John was giving the business owners an opportunity to kind of share their backstory. Cause I've kind of got a little bit about my story and my parents' story and how, how they got here and how they kind of achieved their American dream. But we don't get to see much of that really highlighted in the news. It's always negativity. Mm. And I want to be able to change that tune. And if I'm going to be talking about, being an advocate for a small business, I need to walk the walk and give them the opportunity to share how they started, whether it's one major life event or after 10, 20 years of nine to five of corporate, like, yeah, there's got to be a better way of doing this <laughs> uh, and making that leap and giving them a voice as the first half of the program. And the second half would be kind of sharing a highlight of what does it actually look like running a business behind the scenes? Because for those who haven't made that leap yet, they see a kind of a brick and mortar store or a shop and think, oh, they're, they're very successful. They got bags of money raining from the skies. And most people kind of heard this pitch before. And in reality, any of us who have been in business for for a while, we know the first three years is really more invoices than, than, than <laughs> bags of money coming from the skies. <laughs> but but this is really uh, building that culture and a community of small business owners really coming together. And again, seconding what, what Bill mentioned is sometimes just after the show is done, Someone would ask, hey, do you know someone who does this and that? And just last show, last week, someone was having an issue in terms of getting a contractor uh, specifically for concrete. And right away, um, Sam, the banker, is like, oh, I I got like two or three people for you. And I think John might have already also Mm -hmm. made an introduction. So here's really building a community of not just giving them a voice, but letting them know, hey, there's resources out there and I'm not alone. Don't you just love being the guy who knows the guy? And, and I think being in, involved with, with this, with Business Radio X, helped you do that. So, John, so far we've established that your entire business model is built largely on luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm hearing, right? <laughs> and, and it's working beautifully yeah. anyway. So uh, you've hung out. You're in the studio most of the time, much of the time when, when these folks are doing their show. Or oh, you're yeah. in on some of these shows. Oh. So from the cheap seats, uh, talk about each of the shows and, and, and what you've seen and what what you've observed in in watching these guys 
do their thing in this context. Yeah, well, uh, so again, Bill has uh, Profit Sense, uh, uh, profit, uh, and let's shout it out here, ProfitSenseRadio.com, right? And and thank you. Yep, and uh, and then Anthony has Family Business Radio, Family Family Business uh, Radio dot or family family business radio show dot com i think is it so uh we'll have a link in the show page folks um and um uh, i think what both of them do is they've selected the tribe they want to serve and they serve the tribe and i mean they they make it about the guest and that's why they've been successful because everybody likes telling their own story right it's funny how that works it's a human thing we all like telling our own story and they make it about the guest and they make the guest uh comfortable uh to be able to do that and uh they they have a way of um both of them have a way of interviewing a guest where it's uh it's non-threatening it's not uh you know they're not coming at it like 60 minutes or uh, the new york times uh they're <laughs> about celebrating the great work that uh the business leaders they feature on their shows do uh, well, let me ask you about that. And, and again, I'd like to hear from both of you. I'll start with you, Anthony. Do you find that it, at least initially sometimes guests, while they might be excited and really appreciative of the opportunity to come on and share their story and, and promote their work, do you find that maybe sometimes they're a little bit nervous when they when they first come in? And if so, what kind of things do you do to, to mitigate that? Well, in the beginning, especially for those who are for the very first time putting the voice on air or even doing a podcast, it was, oh, I'm not so sure about this. Oh, just come here experiencing it. And after it's all done, they're like, oh, wow, did I do okay? I was like, well, you did perfectly fine. No one noticed. And I kind of had my own trepidation uh, as well when I was first, first on a podcast as a guest and then became on the other side doing the interview. It's just the public don't can't tell uh, I, i'm like at my I remember my first two i was like shaking in my boots but everyone's like, oh no you did great like, okay great i'm just don't don't let them see me sweat <laughs> so so bill do you think is it something about the mechanics that you employ is it more about heart and mindset the um uh, your ability to kind of set people at ease so um I think a lot of it for me, my my background was in banking prior to I'm being sorry. a business coach. I know. <laughs> um, but bankers develop the ability to ask questions because they're constantly interviewing oh, people for yeah. loans. And so the power is in the question. Uh, I think it's also important uh, to what Anthony was saying. Those questions need to be rooted in curiosity. Uh, I also think if you can figure out a way to interject humor at the beginning of an interview, humor always has a way of disarming people, making them comfortable. If you can talk about some of their accomplishments, the things that they've done, uh, their successes, uh, anybody that I've found that is maybe a little bit nervous to start, once you get into the conversation after about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, it's just two people talking back and forth. Yeah. Well, it just, it, it just occurred to me, you both are, uh, and, and this, maybe it's been uh, accentuated by hanging out with John Ray and, and using this platform, but you guys, you have to be in, in, in your line of work. You guys are professional facilitators. You're not, you're not necessarily radio personalities. I guess you could be if you wanted to be, but you're, I mean, this is your skill set. As a financial advisor, you, right, Anthony, you have to really be good at facilitating a conversation and uncovering what, Folks really need and want. Yeah, even before that, looking at back at my childhood, even on a nerdier side of things, I'm, most people, when they listen in or learn a bit more about me, they are surprised that I'm a natural introvert. And What? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, you got a, a voice for radio. That's kind of how I, getting back to your original question, how I even got into even yeah. thinking about podcasting and kind of the skill set, believe it or not, for, my, for listeners or just finding uh, out about me. Now is that I used to be what they would call a DM or a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons. Who would have thought a tabletop game would have prepared one for self for being a professional, I guess, uh, podcaster and being a facilitator? So from that yeah. became a financial advisor and now doing podcasting is, is, is a surprise. Or in this case, more luck on my end than, than John's <laughs> luck in being successful. That seems to be a theme here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will jump in and say one of the things I remember starting is uh, – John was great at giving me a structure and a framework to work mm. with, uh, also guiding me to the uh, pro business tips, uh, which are on the North Fulton Business Radio website. Uh, I think the combination of the structure and the framework, how he went about asking his questions, 
um, I think, again, really helped me get started. Uh, and so for someone who might be thinking about doing a show, well, well, it's got a, uh, a great framework. John is a great radio show host to work with. Uh, Business Radio X has the pro tips, which you can listen to that are on the uh, uh, show page. And, and, you know, the rest of it is, is up. But I think there's a lot of resources that can help someone who is interested in getting started. Yeah. Okay, John, 500 episodes. That's just for that show, North Fulton Business right. Radio. You have other shows within North Fulton Business Radio. Sometimes you have multiple guests. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? But you don't have 500 clients. So, I mean, this must be bigger than just about you going out and getting a handful of clients. Can you can you speak to, to that a little bit, the thinking behind that? Um, you, are you just not very good at selling your work or what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good at hitting a button. Um, no, you know what? Here's the deal. So we were talking about this before we came on the air. So, and you, my story is similar to yours. Um, you talked about, uh, you liked the idea so much you bought into the company in this case, the network, it was the same deal for me. I mean, you know, uh, Mike Salmon's the guy that started this, um, studio and um he, he i was his sidekick and you know we we were having fun doing doing great work and, and he decided i you know i really can't spend the time in north fulton that i need to spend to develop the studio and he said john you're gonna have to take it over uh or we're gonna have to shut it down well you know i had a decision to make so i, I did the same thing i mean it worked so well for me and my brand and uh gave me the opportunity to um network and build my basic business, my business advisory practice, then I was like, why, why not? I'll take it over. And, um, I made a business out of it. Right. So, and I'm really a professional services business development guy. Just, I found this yeah. having a mic is the most elegant, non-threatening, easiest way to build your business. If you're in the professional services world, that I think there is. And so I, I, I got a taste of that and decided, Hey, I'm going to get in the business of doing that and helping other people. Uh, But, but in all of these cases, I think you're probably pretty hard pressed to hear John Ray on the mic talking a lot about John Ray or Bill. It's not, it's, it's a little different than just having the mic. Part of it is the the approach that the mindset. Yeah. 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 No, no question. So, I mean, people that come in to as guests on this show, they don't know that I have another business. I mean, they think I just, you know, most of them, they think I'm, I just do this show and that's, uh, that's what I do. And, and that's fine, you know, but, and then some of them say, well, you know, how, which is typical in the studio, right? Well, this has been such a great experience. How can I help you? Well, you know, here's what we do. Right. And, and so people, you create reciprocity with people in the, in the studio. That's pretty cool. Well, and it's back to what Bill was talking about. It's all built on a foundation of real relationship, genuine trust. You've chosen, and it sounds like these two gentlemen have too, to, to, to cast a net that's a bit wider than just the folks you're hoping to do business with necessarily, because you genuinely, like I try to do over in Cherokee with the, with my little studio in Woodstock, you really do want to support and, and celebrate the local business and, and community leaders, and you don't need or want 500 clients. You want to work with... Correct. Well, I'm not going to tell you what, who you want to work with. Who do you want to work with? <laughs> I mean, I, I know two of them are right here. But two of them are right how, here. How would you describe the, the folks you really want to work with in this capacity? Well, I want to answer that question, but, um, um, but I, I want to say, to underline what you said. If, if people if you are constantly about yourself, even if you're trying not to make it look that way, people smell Mm -hmm. that. Right. So, (laughs) so, you know, if you, and that's why I think it's so important to, to have a studio where you're serving everybody, right. The whole market and, and even the folks that will never be able to pay you back, but all they can do is say good things about you. That's worth it. Right. Absolutely. And so, um, so being the voice of business in North Fulton or in Sandy Springs or Gwinnett where Mike is or what have you, I mean, you know, that's priceless, right? So it's really important to be that, yeah. but, but, uh, 
I'm always happy to answer the, your second question, which is the kind of people I love to work with. The kind of people I love to work with are professional services people that can't figure out how to move the needle in their business, right? They've hit a, maybe they, sometimes they've hit a, uh, uh, a lull. They built it as far as they can build it and, you know, they want to build it further. Um, or sometimes they're doing okay, but they'd like a little more, uh, elegant, non-threatening way to like build relationships as opposed to, you know, work in the, work in the networking floors or whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so those kind of folks, and again, this is my background it's professional services. I'm not going to tell you how many years, but I could share that with you privately. <laughs> you and I would have the similar number, right? But um, so, you know, I love working with professional services people. I've done it a long time, and I've never found another way to build a business that's so um, uh, elegant and uh, has clear ROI is this this way of doing it. So, so this halo that John wears around town, uh, <laughs> have, you, have you guys found that uh, – that you also have a, a little bit of that um, reputation, that standing within the ecosystem you're trying to serve? Well, some of that runs runs downhill, but we still aspire a lot to be more like <laughs> more like John Ray. Oh. You know, before we leave that uh, that yeah. point that you made about relationships, uh, my experience uh, first is I've found people have to get to know each other and like each other before they try each other. And so my relationship with John is we, we kind of knew each other. Uh, and then we found we had a lot in common. And so we started liking each other. And then he extended the invitation and I, I tried it. Uh, now I trust it and actually got to the point of, you know, try, trust, then refer, have referred him, you know, opportunities for other people that I think would yeah. be great show hosts. And I think the other thing happens during the show with, uh, being the show host and the guest, I get to know these people. They like me. Maybe I like them. And so those opportunities to try, trust, and then refer are the natural evolution of those relationships. And those relationships all go at different speeds and at different ways and different times. Uh, but they do follow the progression. And this show in the interviewing opportunity really gives us an opportunity to know and like people, uh, which then leads to try and trust. Yeah. Is, is that consistent with your experience, Anthony? I, I think I know the answer is yes, but but say more. Yeah, absolutely. And it also gives us the opportunity to kind of showcase that we walk the walk. We don't just talk about, oh, we're here for small business. We're here for small business. But no, we're invested in building that culture mm -hmm. around us and, and kind of seconding not just what Bill said, but I also observe and kind of why I lean towards John and really trusting him and helping me start this whole journey uh, of doing podcasting is I would observe what people's actions are as opposed to what they say. And looking at kind of um, what John impressed me most was by his actions on my first, I think it was my first evening event at the North Phone Chamber that we met. And here's a nobody, and you guy from New York, and he spent, he gave me like 10 minutes of his time. And at the time, I didn't even know how big John Ray was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to top it off, here's a guy who was always showing up almost every single uh, Wednesday morning at the Chambers Pro Alliance meeting when he's so big, I think he he, he, could, he doesn't even need to show up anymore. But yet here he is always committing, giving back to the small business community when at the time he's grown to the point where he really doesn't have to kind of hang with a small fry <laughs> down here in the valley of the hill. And so when you're really looking at John and kind of the, and everyone's on the show and the people that he works with, I'm thinking, yeah, these are, this is my tribe. I, I belong here. Uh, so let's talk about me some more since my mic's still on. <laughs> no, uh, so my day job is yep. I, I own 40% of the Business Radio X yep. network, and a big part of my job really is finding other, I don't know that we can find a John Ray, but someone like a John Ray to, want, to run studios in, in other communities. But also my wife, Holly, and I, we moved um, to Woodstock a little over a year ago. And it was interesting to compare the two different experiences because I, was, I had quite a bit of experience executing um, at the studio, the Atlanta Business Radio studio. And uh, it, it is a great way to meet hard-to-reach people, to build those relationships, to, to capture and distribute really authentic, compelling, relevant content. I mean, it's, it's a content factory, so it, it really does grease the skids for all, all of those efforts. One of the things that I loved about um, being involved with Atlanta Business Radio was uh, because of this platform and the framing 
it really was uh, pretty darn easy to to meet hard to reach people mm-hmm. and get a chance to build relationships with with folks that in other contexts you know it might be a really long hard road. Then when I went out to Woodstock, it's the the dynamics a little different, right? So if you are a resident of Woodstock mm-hmm. or just driving through Woodstock and you want to have a cup of coffee with the mayor or the president of the local bank, all you got to do is ask. You don't need a radio show to do that. But we have in, in, in Woodstock, and I grew up in a small town as well, we have what, what I call the sweet tea barrier, right? Uh, those of us who, who, who have been raised in a small town, we're all very cordial and all that. And, and, and actually, there's a, you know, y'all come over and have some sweet tea sometime. You yeah. know, you, you say right. that when people walk by your front porch. But we're pretty good at, at keeping people at, at arm's length, mm. right? Where having this platform in little old Woodstock, Georgia, uh, it, it goes well beyond having a cup of coffee with someone or, you know, you get past the weather and the kids really quick and you really do get to know the person mm-hmm. and without having to wag your own tail very much, they get to know you and you establish a great deal of credibility. So one, uh, I don't know about if surprise is the right word, but one of the uh, things that feels very good about executing on this business model and, and and capitalizing on this platform in a in a community like Woodstock is uh, it's it's a way to break through that sweet tea barrier in the in the small town and build substantive relationships with the folks that that you really want to get to know better and want to serve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think people are polite, right? And right, yeah, right. they're very polite and. Um, um, They'll let you in at one level, but um, if you want to take it to another level where you're wanting to uh, maybe do business, but at least be try to be helpful, um, it helps to get to a point where you it, you have a um, again. I keep using the word non threatening, you know, a non threatening place to get to know each other, right? And uh, when you have somebody on a show, uh, you've given them something of tremendous value, and. Um, and they appreciate that and remember that. Well, I think I think one or both of you mentioned this a little while ago. I can't tell you how many times it's got to be a, an overwhelming percentage of, of time when someone will come through to uh, one of our studios where I'm in, involved, and almost the first question out of their mouth is, well, "This was great. Thank you so much. What can I do for you?" Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, people. I mean, that's that's yeah. human nature, and and that should be the case because we have genuinely you know re- reached out and served those folks okay so there's luck it's fun <laughs> um it's it, it's good it's it's right and just and true you know it meets it checks all those boxes that's right uh is it producing meaningful business results are are you are you are you getting some sort of return whether it be uh financial or goodwill or market equ- i don't i don't know i'll i'll I'll, I'll ask you both. I'll start with you, Anthony. Do you feel like it's having a positive impact on your business? Well, being the financial guy here, um, I wouldn't keep doing it if it wasn't. <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of the right, right there. That's a, that's a short answer of it okay, all. Okay. Uh, but, but the longer answer would be absolutely. I mean, this definitely shortens the length of time in terms of building that relationship mm, yeah. and being the new guy here on the block three years ago coming from New York people don't know me from anyone else and if I'm going to find a way to differentiate myself as being the go-to guy when it comes to family business and understanding it what better way to other than using this platform to highlight and give service to other people man if I didn't already own 40% of this company I'd write you a check John (laughs) (laughs) you still can (laughs) anytime you want to man (laughs) All right, Bill, impact on on your business, man. Yeah, uh, impact certainly in terms of building relationships, uh, the emotional currency, uh, certainly uh, financial as well. And and being a former banker, I'm interested in the ROI too. So uh, I will tell you uh, the North Fulton Business Radio X show that I do has become the linchpin of my marketing plan. And the reason it's the linchpin. Are you recording this? (laughs) (laughs) I hope I hit the button when we started this. I can say it again. No, the reason it has is because first it's, it's building relationships. Those relationships for me have uh, become clients. Uh, I would say uh, my hit rate is probably for every uh, eight um, guests I may have on my show, I'll usually get a client. So wow. do the math. That's maybe 12 clients a year. 
Uh, and so when I look at my ROI of the cumulative effect of that business, uh, you know, it's, it's hugely rewarding. So it, it is a great way to build relationships, but it's also financially rewarding as well. And it's financially rewarding for my guests because they have the opportunity to do business together too. John's chest is sticking so far out over the edge of this conference table right now. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. Well, that's the whole point, right? I mean, because what we tell people is it's about hard dollar ROI. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you start with service. And if you serve first, you'll create hard dollar ROI. And I think that's what we've done here. That's And these two guys have done a tremendous job at that. I mean, they've, uh, I remember Bill asking me, I don't know if you remember this, Bill, because you asked me, what's my biggest risk? And I, I said, your biggest risk is having too much fun. And you think you're a radio star. <laughs> <laughs> and you start having people on the show that really don't help you in your business, right? I mean, you people that feel good uh, and maybe give you a warm feeling sometimes um, that you had this famous book author on your show but they really aren't going to help you move the needle in your business, right? Yeah, and that's a great point. I don't remember saying that, <laughs> but I am a big believer in that concept. And I think the reason for that, John was very helpful in helping me uh, be strategic about inviting specific people. Uh, there is, if a, for example, uh, I do a fair amount of business exit planning right now because business, mm -hmm. the baby boomer generation is retiring, uh, they're exiting their businesses. So the opportunity to have a show that maybe has a CPA on it that talks about taxes and the taxable impact of a business sale, uh, having an attorney on the show that can talk about the structure of the letter of intent, the asset purchase agreement, is it a stock sale, is it a asset sale, and then also that business owner, they're also listening and understanding, okay, I haven't thought about these things because I've had my head down running my business. And so the the power of that dynamic and in, in what's going on is uh, is incredibly valuable so john what's next man you, you, uh, you going to disney world what's <laughs> what's on the horizon uh dr ray always wants to go to disney world my wife she <laughs> always wants to go to disney world but that's for sure well you know what though i mean we can't look ahead i can't look ahead without looking back first and just saying thank you so see so we met we talked about mike salmon Mike, I love you. Uh, you the you the guy that kind of got everything going here, and and um, we got hooked up somehow. I don't remember how, but we got hooked up, and uh, we you know we had a great relationship, and then you abandoned me, and so I had to do something. Right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but uh, no, he he wanted to spend 100 percent of his time in in Gwinnett, and he's done a fantastic job in Gwinnett, but uh, he's the one that planted the flag here. And so I just got to come along for the ride for a couple of years and then take it over from there. Um, but then to the network, I mean, so Lee, you stone, Abby, y'all just been tremendous support. And, you know, we, I mean, we couldn't have gotten this far without you. Um, and that's for sure. And then, uh, I've got a great team behind me. See, everybody sees John Ray, but they don't, you know, I've got a fantastic team. So, Arlia, Mildred, Angie, Heather, y'all do fantastic work. John couldn't do it without you. Thank you. I appreciate you. So I have to say, I have to look back before we look forward. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it's absolutely been our pleasure to, yeah. to be a part of this. And uh, I hope it'll just continue to grow. And uh, I, I look forward to, to watching your stories unfold, Bill and, and Anthony. It's a, I can't tell you how rewarding it is to, to watch uh, what you guys are doing flourish and help you build your own business. And, and yeah, I mean, we get to come along for the ride, right? <laughs> all, well, all the great work these guys are doing. That's right. And, and that's the, the, the uh, other thing I have to say is, you know, without clients like Anthony, Bill, and, uh, I mean, I could go on and on, you know, Roger Lesby, Frazier Deer, Mike Blake, at, uh, Brady Ware, um, Dr. Jim Morrow, um, Stuart Oberman, Patrick O'Rourke, Dental Business Radio. I mean, I could go. Maybe he does have 500. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You just rattled those off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, uh, the great folks at R3 Continuum in Minneapolis, um, you know, they're, that are just delights to work with, um, they're, they're the ones that, um, 
create opportunity for us to grow and expand because of the business they do with us. And it's just a delight to work with them. And so, um, you know, that's, um, so I'm blessed, man. I'm, I, I can't complain. I'm, I wake up every morning and I'm excited. So as you should be, well, Hey, I, I done told you everything I know, but I don't want to wrap before we make sure that our listeners know how to, uh, reach out and have a conversation, uh, with you guys, if they'd like to speak with you or someone on your team. So, uh, I'll start with you, Anthony, uh, whatever you think is appropriate, LinkedIn, email, phone number, that kind of thing. What's the best way, uh, for someone to, to reach out and connect with you, man? Yeah, definitely. Uh, either my email or LinkedIn, uh, it's simply just my full name, Anthony Chen, uh, last name is spelled C H E N, or you can reach me at my email, which is also my full name, just Anthony Chen, uh, at LFN LLC.com. Well, thanks so much for coming in and sharing your story, man. It's it's a delight to to see you in person again, and I'm already loving hearing hearing your show. But it's uh, it's fun to catch up and and, and have you join us and, and join us in, in celebrating uh, John's five hundred. <laughs> I, I just I just don't have that work ethic, so it's just it's just a little bit beyond me. But uh, maybe one of these days. All right, Bill, let's leave him with some coordinates. What's the best way to reach out to you, man? Yeah, uh, call me at. Seven seven zero five nine seven three one three six. You can also uh, hit me on my email, which is bill at theprofitabilitycoach dot net. Uh, my website is theprofitabilitycoach dot net, and LinkedIn. I'm Bill J McDermott. So, bunch of ways. Terrific! Wow, and Stone for. For the folks over in Cherokee that might be listening, tell them how they can get in touch with you, buddy. Well, we got to let you let you uh, uh, shout that out. All right. Well, you can have a peek at a little bit of our work at CherokeeBusinessRadio.com. We're very excited about a new program that we have that's enabling us to uh, provide more programming for some of these underserved populations, veterans, minorities, nonprofits, and youth. It's uh, called Main Street Warriors Program. And so go check us out at MainStreetWarriors.org. And uh, yeah, text me, give me a call, come have a beer with me under the elm tree behind Reformation. My direct line is 770-335-2050, or you can reach me at Stone, that's S-T-O-N-E, at businessradiox.com. Stone Payton with Business Radio X and Cherokee Business Radio, Anthony Chin with Lighthouse Financial and Family Business Radio, and Bill McDermott, with uh, the host of Profit Sense and the Profitability Coach. Thanks to all, all of you for joining me today and honoring me with your presence to celebrate. This has been the best way I could think to celebrate. <laughs> My pleasure, man. Thanks, It's thanks been to, great, John. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks to each of you. Hey, folks, just a uh, speaking of celebrating something, if you are looking for a great team building event. And I'm talking about one for me that involves one that does not involve broken ankles and mosquito bites. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm referring you to a and S culinary concepts.com. So, yep, they're an award winning culinary studio and they do corporate catering, but executive chef Andrew Traub has developed a team building activity in his studio culinary studio. That is fantastic. So if you're looking for something unique for your team, Go to asculinaryconcepts.com to learn more, or just pick up the phone and call Andrew, 678-336-9196, and tell him that we sent you. And folks, just a quick reminder that we're on show number 500, but we're heading to 1,000. That's our next stop. Um, And we have only gotten this far because of your support. And if you would do me a favor... And share the show like you've always done. So if you've heard something here on this show that um, makes you think, hey, I want to share that with somebody, please do that. And do that for any of our shows. We are here to celebrate business, as you've heard. We're the voice of business in North Fulton, and we want to celebrate the great work of business leaders like Bill, like Anthony, like Stone. That's what we're all about here on North Fulton Business Radio. So for my guests, Stone Payton, Anthony Chin, and Bill McDermott, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.